I believe that one of the attributes of successful people is that they identify barriers to their success and then they create steps to overcome these barriers. What's blocking you from growing? What's keeping you stagnant in specific areas of your life? Are you judging your spiritual development just based on one area? Maybe you're a prayer warrior, but are you hospitable? Are you full of compassion? Maybe you're a great teacher of the word and you've got the gift of the gab, but are you strong in the spiritual gifts? Many times I have to evaluate myself as a husband, as a dad, as a pastor, as a communicator, as a lecturer, as a son, as a brother, as a friend. I was at a friend's 50th just the other day. And as people began to say wonderful things about this friend that was so powerful and so true, it challenged me. What am I like as a friend to my friends? In terms of being a husband, I think one of the best places you can get feedback from is your wife. Because we judge ourselves, you see, by our intentions. But other people judge us by the impact of our behavior. And there are times when I've had intense fellowship with my wife where she's saying, but this is how it impacts me. And I'm defending myself and I'm explaining myself. And she says, but this is how it impacts me. And she's right. And I need to look carefully at that and actually say, how am I as a husband? Now, the good news is that Jesus came to help us grow. Jesus says, come and follow me. And when we follow him, three things happen. The first is he gives us purpose. That's a deep sense of meaning, deep sense of direction. But the second thing is that he teaches and he shows us how to do what he has called us to do. And then the third thing is that he makes us into something we were not. He says, come to me, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. So with God, it's always an upgrade. It's always an upgrade. Isn't that powerful? Jesus doesn't call us for us to remain aimless and simply exist. And that's where many Christians are at. Yes, Jesus called me. But what are you doing with your life? Often when I'm coaching people in the corporate world, I ask them whether they like who they're becoming. And I'm shocked by the number of people who've said to me, you know what, Paul, I don't like who I'm becoming. They tell me, Paul, I don't like who I'm becoming. I'm concerned. And part of the coaching process is saying, who do you want to become? Right? Let me remind you of who you can become, of who you really are. And let's come up with a plan to get you there. So in Matthew 4, 19 in the NIV, it says, come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. In the NLT, it says, Jesus called out to them, come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. You were fishing for fish. I'll show you how to fish for people. In the ESV, and he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. When you choose to follow Jesus, he will give you a commission just as he gave one to the disciples. There's an assignment for every single person here on earth and he will make it clearer and clearer to you as you follow him. If we have truly come to Jesus and are following him, then the result is some form of growth and transformation. You cannot be with Jesus and remain the same. We discover our purpose, we learn from him and we become something that we were not. You know, um, some time ago I was in prayer and the Lord said to me, my people have forgotten that they can learn from me. I have something to say on all aspects of life. You see, Jesus said, come and learn from me for I'm humble and I'm gentle. In Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I'm gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. In the NLT, it reads, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. So you might be here today and you might say to me, Paul, you're talking about us growing, but how do we actually grow? Well, Jesus is your teacher and Jesus says, come, come and learn from me. He can teach you. I remember there was a time when I was about to embark on some uh, postgraduate study program and the people were speaking to us and they were on purpose trying to intimidate us, showing us how difficult it is. And I'd heard that some grown men on the program uh, were actually crying because it was so tough. 
uh, some people were slitting their wrists, wrists uh, because it had become so difficult for them, right? Uh, and I was praying about it uh, because it was daunting for me. But God whispered gently to me and said, I can do it with you. I can do it with you. Let me do it with you, right? God led me to scriptures like this. In John 14, uh, verse 26, it says, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. He's your teacher. In John 16, verse 13, However, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears, and he will declare to you what is to come. So we shouldn't be stuck in the mentality that we cannot achieve certain milestones because we're not on our own. You're not on your own. The Holy Spirit is there for you. Being led into all truth means everything that you need to know. Everything that you need to know. You'll prosper mentally. What is true prosperity? It's having, having everything that you need in order to do what God has called you to do. If God has called you to do that particular academic endeavor, guess what? He gives you the mind to be able to succeed in it. I believe that the Bible tells us very clearly that we have the mind of Christ. I believe that very strongly. We've got the mind of Christ. Whatever you want to grow in, the Holy Spirit will teach you. There's such a proper foundation before we start really going deeper into this. Whatever you want to grow in, the Holy Spirit will teach you. Going deeper, we see that growth and transformation is actually learning, isn't it? It's about learning. And you cannot experience growth without learning. And the word disciple in the Greek is actually the word methetes, which literally means to learn. And it actually describes someone who sits under teaching. That's a disciple, someone who sits under teaching. And the teaching transforms them and they become something that they were not. And you know, my definition for the word learn is basically this. Learning is the acquisition of knowledge with a resultant change in cognitive processes, in attitude, in values and behavior, right? So it's not just about acquiring information. And many people tend to measure learning uh, by that. How much information do you acquire? No, it's actually to do with the resultant change in how you think, in your attitude, in your values, in your behavior. This is so important.